Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we've got our Land Geeks in tow for our Geeky Roundtable podcast. This is our second episode. I'm really excited because we have with us Eric Heeserson from landopia.com, Tate Litchfield from FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, Scott Todd from Scott, I, I always forget your your website. Go, yeah, you you don't need it. Just go to scotttodd.net. <laughs> scotttodd.net. I'm just kidding, Scott. Landmodo.com. And of course, we can't forget about Sean Rickman, our newest member. Uh, Sean, what is it? Canopy? We are currently canopylandholdings.com. Canopy We've got holdings. something com. new in the works in the next couple of months. Well, speaking of new in the works, we can't say LoanGeek.io anymore because it's a long story. Should I just tell you guys a story? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, All right. Go. So turns out in about 2005, the, uh, what is it, the paycheck industry? What is that? That like paycheck loans? Payday loans. The payday loan industry was blowing up, okay? And they keep hitting people's ACH, even if it failed. They keep hitting it, keep hitting it, keep hitting it. And there are a lot of fees involved, and a lot of problems involved. So the Obama administration comes in, see what's going on in the payday loan industry, and they say no more predatory lending, which they were doing. So if you have loan in your name, banks run for the hills, okay? Um, there's a lot more to the story, but for the most part, banks run for the hills. You don't want to say you're doing a loan, right? MasterCard and Visa don't like loans. Banks don't like loans. So if you have a website, and you say you're, you're lending, maybe you might want to, I'm not giving anyone advice. I'm just saying this is what happens, okay? So as a result, we can't say loangeek.io. We are thinking about geekpay.io. Eric Peterson, geekpay.io, do you like it? Uh, it's a little tricky to say. Doesn't quite flow off the tongue, but it's nice and short. I like Tate, that. Tate, geekpay. Geek pay? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I like the fact that it's geeky, obviously. Not my first choice, but well, I like it. I, I'm flexible like a yogi. What do you guys think, Scott? I, I, mean, I like better? payment geek. I like payment geek. I have That's payment exactly geek right now. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. All right, all right. I've got payment geek right now. We can that do was my right. original vote, so. <laughs> all right, let's just keep payment. Okay, so this, this podcast is sponsored by PaymentGeek.io. <laughs> nice. Automate your payments, set it, and forget it. We take ACH, we take credit cards, um, and it works great. So, Scott, you've got a roundtable thing you want to discuss. What's going on, man? Well, I was just going to say that, you know, like, um, look, we, we hear all the time, like, man, <laughs> you know, I'm doing this deal or, you know, I, I'm going to get 300%, 1,000%, and we see people continuously. We see this at boot camp all the time, like, I'm going to get a thousand percent, even though you're not always going to get a thousand percent. And um, I bought a property. Uh, let's see, January. I bought it in January. So we've owned it for over two months now. And it, we, it, it was probably one of the most expensive properties that I bought. Paid $5,000 for it. Uh, it's in an area that I know. And um, I know I could sell this land for... 15,000 on terms. Okay. Maybe right. 12 for cash. Not bad. That's, that's right? not 300%. Okay. Not bad at all. But person after person that has looked at this, and I'm talking probably 30 people have gone out and looked at it and they all have said no way. And they don't like the, they don't like the, um, they don't like the, the texture of the land in terms of, you know, they, they don't like the way that it sloped. Right. So we have a guy and he came to us and he said, $6,000. And we're like, nope, sorry. And he comes back and he's been playing this game. He's probably made seven offers on the property. Okay. Every week he comes up with another offer. And we said, look, we'll sell it to you for 12. No, 11, no. Uh, $10,000. No, now a 10,000, what I'm doubling my money, right? Not bad. Double. Okay. Right. So he shows up yesterday with his, with his offer of the week 
and it is 8,500 plus a dock fee. And I said, okay, let's do it, right? And I think it took my, my team by surprise because, you know, like, man, they, they, they continue to, um, to think like, well, maybe we'll get more money. Maybe we won't get more money on it. But, you know, I, I wanted to kind of go through my, my thought process and my logic here is, is that I've got $5,000 that's been tied up in this property for 60 something days. And I've got a guy here that wants to make a cash offer, right? It's the only cash offer. In fact, this, he's been the only guy that's made any offers along the whole way. And so I said, okay, well, let's go ahead and accept his $8,500 offer, uh, which meant cash in the bank today. I get out of this property, which may, may be a great deal for him. Maybe, maybe it's a terrible deal for me. I don't know. The way I look at it though, is that it's a profit. I'm putting money into my bank account, another $3,500. I can free up that capital to go do more deals because while it's sitting there, I'm not earning anything, I'm earning zero. And I can redeploy it to maybe something that's a winner. Now, would you guys do that deal? Eric Peterson, I'm gonna, you're gonna, I'm gonna put on your Scott Todd hat. Same exact deal, what would you do? Well, I, I think I might accept that in, in that scenario um, only because the factor of, um, you know, if, if everybody that's going and looking at the property, you know, has a problem with it and it's consistent across the board, it's not just coming from one person. Um, I feel like if someone wanted to come and offer me cash and I made a profit, I, I might just take it and move on. Um, you know, I mean, it's always good to have cash in the bank. So I, I think I'd probably do it. So I completely disagree with what you just said, Eric. All right. It's always good to have cash in the bank. It's always good to have your money moving out of the bank. <laughs> unless your bank is giving you an interest <laughs> that I don't know about. Cash but in the bank everything. to spend. Cash in the bank to spend. <laughs> Tate Litchfield, what would you do? <laughs> you know, uh, I knew you were going to say that, Mark. I, I would, as he was saying that, I was like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Um, I'm taking the cash. I mean, listen, the way I look at it is you're still making money. And in fact, you're making good money here. And if it wasn't getting the traction that you would hope for over the last 60 days, and I don't know, yes, it could change in the next 60 days, but how much are you going to be missing out by not having that extra $5,000 to deploy? So I'm taking the cash. Does it make a difference, Sean Rickman, in your mind, if you don't have another deal to deploy that cash? Would you then pass and keep waiting for the top dollar? Or would you still do the deal? I mean, based on the way Scott described it, where he's not getting a lot of interest otherwise, I'm happy to do that deal. And it's not even just a land business thing. You know, we talk about this a lot where our, our view starts to skew on what's a good deal. You know, I'm talking to my dad who's big in investing. And right now he, he used the phrase, I am thrilled to get 5% on my money. I can double in six months and the whole Langit community will call that a bad deal. But I'm over here thinking, you know, this is brilliant. Yeah, we're so spoiled. It's, it's really crazy. I mean, I remember when Bob Demick did his first deal and he was sheepishly reporting back he only made 150%. Now this is a guy that was making like 8% in the market and he was super happy about it, but he was like shy about mm -hmm. telling the, the, the mastermind group, I flipped this deal and I made 150%. Scott, do you remember that? Uh, it, was te it was terrible. And I, I, I felt bad for him because you were like, well, how do you feel about that? And he's like, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Tate's like, it tastes I, like you, 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 you priced it off. Like, he like, like Bob, you, you priced it wrong, but he didn't because it sold fast. See, Mark, I think that, you know, my, the reason I want to go through this deal and I want to bring it up is because we see a lot of times, we see people that they, they'll think like, well, well this, this land is worth this. And look, I've sold two and a half acre properties in this area for up to $20,000, right? So it, maybe this guy is getting a good deal, but... To me, I would, at that point, you know, like after it's been in my inventory for a certain period of time, it's got to go, right? Like, I don't care if it's on terms. I don't care if it's on cash. It is, 
negative cash flowing for me every month because I got to pay taxes on it at a minimum. So I, opportunity cost. So how this is this is what I tell my team. It's got to go. How's it going to go away tomorrow? Right, right. So I, I want to share with you guys if I can find it um, a deal that Tate and I just did. Oh yeah. Um, this, and and I said awesome. I said I sent him the. I wonder if this is it. Maybe it's not. I sent him the the voicemail. The guy let the sent and I sent him a Vox mic. This is one of my favorite voicemails of the year. This is like the holy grail of voicemails. Oh right? wait, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. Do you Can we have just it? Just explain still? it. No. I yeah, don't let's just explain it. it. Just explain it. All right. So basically, this was. I mean, we've done a lot of deals together, and this has to be one of the easiest deals we've ever had, wouldn't you say, Mark? I mean. Oh, I mean, this is a layup. This is, it's one of those deals that, you know, only come around every so often. But basically we got, we owned a piece of property out in Colorado and we got a letter about six months ago from a neighboring state, a neighboring city saying that they wanted to buy our property from us. And we didn't respond because it was a low ball offer. It was like 3,500 bucks or something for the property. And I said, you know what, I'm not even going to waste our time responding to this. Well, a couple months passed by and they contact us. When was it? Friday? Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Friday. And uh, I'm speaking with a representative and he tells us that, hey, they've acquired 90% of the property that they needed to build this new reservoir. The only problem is our property, which is smack dab in the middle of the reservoir, is one they don't own yet. <laughs> So I, I could see all the other land geeks laughing and smiling. And so he comes back and says, I'm going to write you a cash offer. <laughs> yeah. He goes, I'm going to write you a cash offer of $5,000 for this property. And basically we kind of told him, you know, hit the road, man. We, we got what you need and it's not for sale for $5,000. So we did some negotiation and uh, ended up setting on a very, very nice profit there. But the beauty of it was they had to have it. It's we were put in this very unique situation where, you know, their project was literally at a standstill without our pro without our property. So it, no, it, you can't you can't leave us hanging. Oh uh, <laughs> how so much we are we talking about here, man? Well, let's just say five figures. Is that is that enough to per perk your interest there, Scott? Well, that's a big range, Matt. I know, I know. We ended up, so we typically sell these properties for around $7,000 cash. We, we settled with the guy, $10,000 cash, immediate closing. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to make uh, an extra three grand above what we normally make, but... Uh, this isn't the one that you wholesale for me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the best part of this deal is that we already had our money out. This is only yeah, yeah, a defaulted yeah. property. So we have, no, we have no costs associated with it at uh, all. So we, our basis is zero. Even and, then. And then, you know, Tate and I had talked about it. We're like, look, you know, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Could we have taken advantage of them? Absolutely. But I, th I, I, I think we both felt good. Be like, okay, this is fair. Yeah. Um, we're making, you know, a massive profit and they're happy. We're happy. And what did he say to Tate? Like, what did he say to you? Um, I've never said, paid this much this ever. Is the most we've ever paid for a piece of property out in this area. And I said, well, you know, you're dealing with the best. And so that cost, there's a price tag associated with that. And he laughed and, you know, I could tell he was a little upset, but he told me, he's like, yeah, at this point, I just want to get it done. So we signed the paperwork today and, uh, the best part is, Mark, what is the ROI on a property that we've recovered all of our initial investment? Infinite. So really, I mean, how could we not do this pro deal? Yeah, I mean, we're going to do the deal. It's just a matter of, you know, what we're going to do. I mean, Sean Rickman, would you have done anything differently? No, that's exactly right. Although I will say that it sounds like people like you are the reason these government funding things go over budget. Because you're on the other end <laughs> negotiating for that money. That's exactly what I would have done. Yes, indeed. And I've got Eric, no problem. Eric Peterson, would you have done anything differently? No, I think he made a mistake telling you that, you know, you were mm -hmm. one of the last properties remaining there yep. and put himself in a bad position. But, uh, but no, I, you know, I think it's, it's good. Yeah, and he kept, you know, and the nice thing is we never countered. Like he kept lowballing us for like six months, 2,500, 3,500. Then five thousand. We didn't even respond. 
But yeah, I mean, <laughs> so we never even countered. Scott, what would you have done differently? Other than be ridiculously jealous right now. Uh, well, what would I have done differently? Well, I mean, look, it's, it's like found money, right? You know, like I, I, um, I think I would have had to have asked them for something just over the top too, you know, like name it after me, name the reservoir after me. <laughs> wow. Oh, you know what? The, the deal's still not done. Yeah. I will, like- I'm going to add an addendum. You know, payment. The reservoir is now going to be called PaymentGeek.io. Yeah, until yeah, yeah. It was sponsored by pay, this was sponsored, sponsored, sponsored by Payment Geek. Yeah, so, you know, it's not a bad idea actually. Not a bad idea. Pre advertising. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. You Sean know, Rickman. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, Sean Rickman. What's going on with you this week? I mean, we're in the process of moving, but we just spend a little time doing that. A little time running our land business. A lot of time just enjoying the beautiful weather here. It's a, it's a pretty good life we've got going. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been ramping up. We had a, a little bit of a dry spell at the beginning of the year for picking up lots. And Rachel, being the saleswoman, she has sold everything we had. So uh, we've been ramping back up the sales machine now that we've got a bunch of incoming lots. Scott Todd is going to beat you up, Sean Rickman. Scott, I was what, mailing. I just went through a weird phase where it was about six weeks. I couldn't pick up anything. The Scott says this at boot camp all the time. You're a chicken business without chicken. <laughs> well, yeah. I fixed that problem. I, I spent a long time writing a program so it, uh, similar to what you guys do. So I now mail 60 letters every day, whether I'm near a computer or not. Awesome. Awesome. The automation. OG Pass, baby. Mm-hmm. Eric Peterson, what's going on with you? Anything new? Uh, nothing new, I guess. I mean, I, I just uh, been wrapping up a couple deals uh i had one that was really supposed to close last quarter but it kind of fell into this quarter um it's a nice deal uh, about 530 percent or so um just i had to mail paperwork and and wait for the mail so it just kind of slowed down the deal a little bit but uh but so uh so that's wrapped up and and that feels good and um just continuing uh, mailing and marketing. Nice. Is anybody annoyed with Simplify like I am? Scott, are you annoyed with Simplify? Well, why? What's going on? I got a bill for like 330 bucks for the year. Uh, for what? I don't know. They just sent me an invoice. <laughs> uh, they sent me, well, see, they sent me a, uh, do you have multiple accounts? No. Hmm. So they sent me a bill. I have like three accounts set up. I have one main account. I had two other accounts set up and they sent me a bill for 195 for each of them. And I called them up and I'm like, no, 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 no. I pay 195. And they said, uh, no, it's 195 per account. I'm like, mm, I didn't know that. So then they basically, I said, I want to go back to the, on these other two accounts, I want to go back to the pay as you go plan of $10 per uh per deed recorded and they said, well, we can't do that anymore because if you are, um, if you're a real estate investor, you have to pay the, uh, the annual fee plan. I'm like, well, I was grandfathered in and they said, okay, sounds good to us. So. All right. So I, I've got a phone call. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got my bill, um, the first of March and it was 195 for the year. Yeah, they're they're trying to take advantage of me. All right, I'll call them. See, Mark, no, you know it's good. It, it's a good thing I I I, uh, I asked. Could it just be that we've done so many more deals than Pro- stop? That we're probably getting- no, <laughs> no, it's not. That's not the case. That's unlimited. Are, are, you, are you sure? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I think okay. Tate, what's your number? What's your number for the year? I don't know. I honestly don't recall, but I know I've done. We've done our numbers. Our goal for March already this month. Well, yeah, because March is already over. (laughs) (laughs) I hope you beat your March number. We hit our April numbers already. But we've done 70 deals this year. I don't. So we're not, we're not, uh, we're not where I would hope to be. I really wanted to be at one a day. It's okay. 70 is not a bad number. Um, That's good. For for us though, we we hit May, June, July, 
and August, we have four, four months of slow sales coming to us. Now, and that's because the areas I work in, right? Um, doesn't mean I'm not gonna transition and shift over to other areas because I will, but uh, for now we've done 70 deals, not a bad year. Not bad. I mean, August is the worst month. Eric Peterson, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, August was slow last year. Sean, August. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I guess I didn't notice it since I've only really been doing this about two years, but I have the deal tracker up, the Land Geek deal tracker. I'll mm -hmm. plug there. And it does look like we don't have one, maybe one August sold compared to several for every other month. So I guess that is a slow month. So Tate, if we know August is slow, what can we do to level out August? I mean, shouldn't we start now like with some kind of August like bonanza? Well, and that's what we've done in the past. We've done things such as like the land carnival. We've also done, you know, where we'll send out a mass email saying, come on, like make us an offer on anything and just kind of use August as a month where we blow out some of our remaining inventory. And I mean, last August was not as good as some of the other months, but it was still a, you know, a six figure month for us. So uh, it wasn't terrible in the, in the big picture thing, but you know, we, we always run, kind of a lot of specials during the month of August and it's hard. I mean, it's hot in Arizona, it's hot in Nevada, right? We want to be by the pool. So, and kids are out and everything, but you could definitely prepare for it now. Yeah. We're having our next boot camp uh, in August. If you go to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp, you can start filling that room up now because well, maybe it's going to be like 120 here, but the, it's 80 degrees in the pool. Mark. That might just be exactly what we need. Every time I come back from boot camp, I sell, you know, five or six properties. So as long as we have boot camp in August, we're going to sell a property, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so I mean, problem solved. We plan for it ahead of time. We're good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Scott, I, I, you... I, th I think that that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Tate. Scott is white hot competitive. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Scott, I got some you, ideas. You, I got some ideas for August. Uh, no, no, I, I, um, I probably got like I, I don't know. Like, I think I've always been uh, in a way competitive. Not like like if I, I look at it, I'm like, okay, if if you can do it, I can do it. And so it's not necessarily about beating you. It's more of I know I can keep up with you. So if somebody else is doing something that's higher then I will figure out like, if they can do it, I can do it. Why, why can't I do it? Yeah, Sean Rickman, you feel the same way? Yeah, I've, I've read a lot of business books and that was a big takeaway was, you know, people who are really successful in business, they don't have anything special you don't have. They don't know things you don't know. They just have the guts to do it and to persist. And when something didn't work to admit that it's my fault. I don't blame luck or someone else. If it's not working, I get in there and I fix it. And that's, seems to me to be the difference between success and failure. Yeah. Eric Peterson, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, it's a matter of just kind of sticking with it and, you know, kind of grinding it out. Yeah, no, I know. You know, it's funny. It's like, I, I think though that what, what the way that Scott does it is he models himself after somebody that he is already where he wants to be. So he's like, okay, that's the bar. I'm going after that bar. And in the same way, like you wouldn't go up Everest. Maybe you would. I know I wouldn't without a Sherpa, right? Like you'd want, you'd want someone to guide you and help you. And, and that way you're going to survive that trip, right? Where a lot of times what we see is people are like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'll, I'll figure this out on my own and end up freezing to death and then say, oh, well, land investing is not for me. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I, you, you, you try to climb Everest without a Sherpa. Sherpa. Is that, too, is that too strong, Tate, to say? No, I mean, you know, Mark, you know I love to fish. And everywhere I go fishing, what do I do? What's the one thing I always do? You I find, yeah, I hire a guide. I hire a guide because I want to catch fish. And, you know, that's that person's job to help me be successful. So it's kind of like anything in life. If you want to be successful, go to those who know what they're doing and, you know, learn from them and use them as mentors, whether – you know, whether they know it or not, but you can use them as a kind of a bar. Like you said, have them set the standard. Yeah. I mean, if, if time is our only non-renewable resource, I would absolutely want to go to 
as many people as I could to learn and shortcut my way up. Right. So Scott, what are you thinking about this? You got this, you got this quizzical look on your face. No, I'm, I'm just thinking like, I think that, I think that the, the deal is that like success leaves clues, right? Like there's no reason that, um, that you have to go everything on your own. You know, like you can, you're going to pay one way, one way or the other, right? You're going to pay with mental anguish. You're going to pay with, uh, you know, you're going to pay with your, you know, d- deals, lack of deals, whatever it is, you're going to pay for it. So why not just, like you said, go to somebody that's, that's done it and fo- just follow them. And I think that that's, it's funny to me because I see a lot of people that um, even when it comes to like the offer letter, they, they just, they don't want to mail out the simple offer letter that's there because they, they think, oh, I got to send this, you know, long introduction. And, you know, Mark, you and I did a, <laughs> you and I did a, uh, a podcast today where the guy basically dropped the bomb on us. He's like, the, the nine, the nine word email, which, you know, it's basically about just keeping it all completely simple. And so, I mean, you don't, you need to maybe have less in your less, less of everything in that aspect, but don't overwhelm the people that you're mailing to, but follow the, the system and follow the proven leader. Yeah, absolutely. Sean Rickman, we're at that time now on the podcast. We get to put you on the spot. Mm-hmm. What's your tip of the week? Website, resource, book, anything. We've got a new add-on that we have to our website. We've had for about a month. It is talk.to, T-A-W-K dot T-O. It's a really easy WordPress plugin and it allows, I know Mark, you already have something a little more complex, but when people come to your website, you can message with them. I can get Uh, an app on my phone so they can basically text me without having my number. I can respond from anywhere if I wanna do that. I can track their activity on our website, I can see where they came from. I can see when somebody's on my website, I can see if they clicked through from Land and Farm, from Facebook, from anywhere like that. And so it's just a really nice little thing to have, especially if you're the type who's checking your email every few minutes to see if somebody's interested because it'll buzz in my pocket if somebody messages me. I don't have to worry about it when I'm out. You know what? I'm, I'm going to get this one. I'm not happy with one I have. Um, so this is, this is way better. Talk.to. Mm-hmm. I, great. That's a great tip. And you can set available hours and away hours already. You don't have to just sign in and out every time. So yeah, it's really nice for a free little add-in. My only problem is they don't charge. How are they going to make any money? <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> oh, it will yeah, be your was, problem. <laughs> wait, wait, remove branding. Remove branding. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Re- re- rebrand the widget with your own brand. Wait. Okay. To purchase this new add-on. It's nine bucks a month. Or fifteen dollars a month. Okay, they're not going to so, go away, Mark. All right, good. Yeah. good. All right. See. The the app for your website is free, but they charge you seventy nine dollars a month to to download the mobile app. <laughs> seventy nine a month? Should. No, it's, I'm kidding. That's what they should do. Right? Not yeah, bad. I, w- no, I wouldn't the, have it if it did. That's what they should do. All right, I'm I'm I just I'm just joining. Um, you know what's so funny is like. Um, I'm so easily distracted. Like you, all you did say was talk.to. I went to the website, like we're on a podcast mm-hmm. right now and I still can't focus. I did the same thing, Mark. Don't worry. Well, I've got my, I'll tell you what my tip of the, of the day is going to be phenomenal. So, because it's going to help with my distraction. All right. So, but I'm not going to steal Eric Peterson's thunder. Eric, what's your tip of the week? All right. I think this has probably been mentioned before profit first. Um, I just, uh, you know, since the beginning of the year, I've implemented that strategy and uh, I just, I really like um, the whole process there that uh, Mike Michalowicz talks about and how, um, you know, pulling the profit out of the business. Um, as I prepare this year to to um, basically quit my full-time job, um, I've been, you know, utilizing this this profit first model in in preparation for for next year and i think it's it's been a really great tool um prior to this i've just been dumping everything right back into the business which is also good you know doing this part-time i can i can do that but um i really kind of like that process and how that's working for me yeah i mean eric after this podcast you know we should have you on speed dial so when you sell a parcel on terms right you just sell us that note for 12 months you take that capital you redeploy it and then 12 months reverts back to you. 
and the ROI is sick. So, Scott Todd, you like that that uh, that strategy? I think it's an underused strategy. It's an underused strategy. Nobody wants to give up that uh, that passive income for twelve months, even though they're getting their money out. I don't know why. It's interesting. All right, Tate, what's your tip of the week? Uh, you know, I was thinking about this, and I realized that maybe I'm not as geeky as I thought I was because I haven't found any new software that I'm that I've been utilizing since we spoke last. Um, you know, I guess tip of the week would just be stay focused. I mean, ultimately, that's what it comes down to me every day. As you said, yeah, you know, I have a to-do list, and it's something I go through. And I don't move on to the next task until I complete the first task. And so it's kind of this ladder I climb and I can, I call it kind of like my ladder to success. Every day, if I do these same things, it's going to get me to where I want. So I don't know, stay focused. Does that even count? I, I mean, it's a good reminder because like I have a problem. I'm like, I have the attention span of a ferret on a double cappuccino. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it's a good reminder for me, stay focused, you know, be like Tate. I want to go back to what Eric said though, about profit first because somebody on our panel actually has a really in-depth accounting program specifically based on our uh, land geek, land investing model. And um, Scott Todd, when's that thing going to come out for real? Like, No, it's out. It's, it is out. Where, where yeah. can we get it? Uh, ScottTodd.net forward slash accounting. ScottTodd.net forward slash accounting. And what are we going to learn? Uh, you will learn everything on how we do the entire accounting from beginning to end, how we, how we deal with the accounting when we buy the property, how we do the monthly billings in terms of accounting for the monthly billings, how we track all of that, all of the expenses. And you'll, we, we do talk on uh, Profit First. Eric talked about it, Profit First. We talk about how I've implemented Profit First for my business. You get the spreadsheets that, that uh, give you everything that you need to, um, to uh, you know, do, do your journal entries and everything like that. It's the exact same tools that my team uses. We even get into when they default, how to unwind the transaction out of your accounting system. So it's, it's end to end, everything covered. Eric, you were on it, right? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Excellent. I highly recommend it. If, if someone hasn't uh, looked at that, it's, it's very useful as you, you know, I mean, a lot of us don't want to do our own accounting, but um, certainly to understand how to communicate with your accountant on how it should be done, or at least here's one way you can do it kind of scenario. Um, it's, it's very good. Yeah. Now, do you have any automation in there, Scott? Uh, we do all kinds of automation, Mark. All right. Well, all how much is this course? Well, it's four ninety seven. dollars All right. But how if about, you how act... If you act quickly because we haven't raised a price yet on the site, it's still two nine seven. Well, how, how about this? How about this? If they send an email to you yeah. saying, you know, art of passive income model podcast, right. You know, or like a round table. Yeah. Will, will you give them like 50 bucks off? Uh, here's what I'll do. Okay. Because the, the price is scheduled to go up like last week. I haven't done it yet. Right. Right. So here's what, here's what they'll do. If they send me an email, uh, if they go, go to the website and they use, um, I'm trying to think how I could do a promo code on the fly. So, uh, oh, you got me off guard here. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Here's what we're going to do. How about if you email me uh, a code at some point? So yeah. for next week, when this goes off, yeah, I'll I can be like, Hey, if you heard that, if you heard the round table, yeah. In the notes, here, yeah. in the notes, the show notes for this uh, podcast, we, we will give you $50 off. That's cool. But unfortunately, it won't be off the 297. Why don't I just still honor the 297? Mm. I'll give you, I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. If you email in the promo code, uh, or I'm sorry, in the show notes, there'll be a promo code and we will honor the price of 297 for the, the next, what, what do you say, Mark? Month? Do you no. take action now? One <laughs> no, week? I, 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 you know, this, this is what it should be. If I were you, I would say four ninety seven. All right. Because it's, cause you did want to raise the price. And that's really what it, it's, it's, it's supposed to. Yeah. To be fair, that's probably, 
you know, it's, it's probably worth like five grand. So I think it is, you know, so 497 is really fair. What I would do is say you get 50 bucks off with the promo okay. code and for the next year you get free updates. Okay. Okay. That's a good I think, deal. I think that's, that's a good fair. deal. Okay, because, so you know, because the problem with your course is that the IRS code is constantly being updated. Well, we don't really talk about the IRS code per se, but there will be updates because we're going to change some of the things that we do. So I'll do that. We'll do that. So and, even the, and even the automation gets easier, or better. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. and for your back end, you know, we'll we do can, it. You know, with loan, loan geek. So you've convinced well, Sean, me. what's up with you? I just want to interrupt. I was trying to be more like you, Mark. So I immediately went to the website and I'm not finding it. Right. <laughs> right. Just roll oh, is it go- That's going it's to be, be the It's going to be scotttime.net <laughs> forward slash accounting. Sean, <laughs> I'll try to be smooth here. I didn't want oh you to send gosh. people to the wrong place. I was no. trying to help out. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> listeners, it will be there. All right, Scott, what's your tip of the week? I think we just gave it, didn't we? No, that's, that's one tip. <laughs> Okay. All right, Mark. It, here, here's an app that I've been using, and I, I know. Look, I know you're gonna say, "Well, why, why not? Why not this one? Why not that one?" It's okay though. Um, so you know, like I have always had my, like I use uh, Gmail. Okay, so I use it for for my own email, personal, and I use it for business. And I've always had like the Gmail tabs open. I had two tabs open on my browser, and what I found is that when I saw that the number changed. I was clicking over. No matter what I was doing, I'd see the number change. I'm like, oh, what, what, what happened? So I didn't like the Mac email. I don't like Outlook's uh, exchange email thing, client. So I found an email system that I really, really like, and it's called Shift, S-H-I-F-T. Okay. okay. Is it on the App Store? Uh, I think it is. Yeah. So let me All see. Right, I'm going to go to the Mac um, app store. Now, now I'm going to get lost in the shift, uh, email, Gmail. And what's really cool about this is it allows, it's, it, the website is actually tryshift.com. And what it does is it, it allows you to set up multiple, not just Gmail, but you can set up, um, Gmail, Outlook, in, uh, inbox mail, office 365, you can set up multiple accounts and over on the left-hand side, each account has its own uh, picture. It's, it's the same picture that you would use on your Gmail accounts. And so I can, I can shut off all the notifications. So no more getting the email alert, no more little numbers, no more little anything. I don't see it. It just sits over there. And then what's cool is I also use Google Calendar as my primary calendar. And so right from my email, I can access uh, Gmail, I can access the calendar, and I can also access Google Drive. So I can access everything I need right from this one client. And it's amazing because it just allows me to switch back and forth between the two accounts very easily. They're separate, I like that. It works well for me and it doesn't draw my attention. Oh, there's something shiny and new. Oh my goodness. But then it says sent with shift for every email. No, no, it doesn't say that for me. If it's free, are you paying 20 bucks a year? Uh, yeah, I pay $20 a year. You know what? 20 bucks is like for a year is nothing. I thought it was gonna be 20 bucks a month. Okay. No, I pay, yeah, mine doesn't say sh- uh, sent with shift, no. Oh, okay, so yeah, you pay 20 bucks. Yeah. That's like that's like for like Tate, like, you know, a cup of, or not a cup, because I think she's too young to drink coffee. Like, like that's like Tate's like, you know, yeah, Pro- I mean, protein bar after a, after a bike ride. Yeah, yeah. T- t- Tate's like, oh, I gotta eat twenty dollars for the protein bars now. <laughs> yeah, with, with that goo, the goo. Yeah, All I right. need my protein, ma. I know it's you know it's so funny. Like it, honestly, I I would never work out for for Tate. Like it's like oh, I'm gonna talk to Tate, tate today. I better go do something. Yeah, because like you you know he's he's biking every day. It's just it's just annoying. I can't wait for that baby to come, Tate. And you're going to get fat like me. Yeah. It won't be a bad thing. Fat and happy. Yeah. Big Papa. All right. <laughs> we're, calling, we're calling Tate Big Papa now, huh? Yeah. I love it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> All right. My tip of the week. <laughs> wait, is, wait. I, can I stop you for a minute? I got to sure. go back. I was watching uh, Family Feud, <laughs> Family Feud and... Uh, they're asking like, what, what's, some, what's a name that you call 
uh, what's another name for grandma or something like that. And so they were going through and good old Steve Harvey said um, that he wanted, he wanted his grandkids that like, Hey dad, you know, what do you want? What do you want the grandkids to call you? And he said, I want them to call me big pimpy. <laughs> and they're like, the kids are not going to call you big pimpy. I think that's Tate's new nickname. Big pimpy. <laughs> Pimpy. Sean, let's let's have the round table decide. Big Pimpy for uh, I, I was on for Big Papa. I don't know if I want to if I want to say Big Pimpy. I think that'll keep me from contacting Tate just so I don't have to say it out loud. Yeah, I mean access to Tate's tough too. Eh. And then it, like if Tate doesn't like it, he's like, no, right? Yeah, you might get uh, blacklisted. <laughs> yes, blacklisted. Okay, okay. If you guys don't want to do that, no problem. We well, you guys can call him that, but in Boxer where I have him listed, I'm just going to call it Big Pimpy. <laughs> You know, that's appropriate. I'm okay with that. Okay, change it now. All right. Well, I, I think my tip of the day is, is an app, and I'm really enjoying it. Really, really enjoying it because it helps me be more calm, more present, more balanced. It's called Sway, S-W-A-Y. And honest to God, it walks you through it. I'm not even joking. I was just showing you guys what you have to do. Um, you sway slowly with the phone and then they'll tell you you're moving too fast you're moving too slow like this with the phone and it's got all these levels How much did you paid for this mark i don't want to tell you I, it's got all the levels balance it's got balance it's got harmonize it's got explore i'm getting i'm getting weird in my old age i really am but you know i need it discover presence and it, it it's just so nice three dollars <laughs> I know, I know. Three dollars to sway. It's so funny. Like, okay, fine. I'll save you three dollars. Just sway every day, and listen to some nice music. It's kind of cool. I don't know. I mean, it's it's really woo woo, but I like it. It's my tip. So, Eric Peterson, what do you do to stay calm and centered? Uh, I think it's just my personality, and I'm not real like. <laughs> up and down i'm just kind of <laughs> straight line so that, that's nice sean this, po this podcast is like shocked over sway <laughs> i i have a free app called calm that does guided meditations so i try to do those yeah i mean i i've done i've done calm i've done them all i've done literally all of them and now because i have the attention span of a ferret and a double cappuccino i have to go and try all of them and this is the new one, and I sway. So, I think, you, you can, know what, in Tate, there's a, a Ray Strummer song called Swang. Yeah. So. All right. All right. <laughs> Man, this, this podcast is like, <laughs> this. I mean, the Roundtable podcast has really devolved. But I think, I think for the most part, we got some really good tips. And I don't know. Eric Peterson, are we good? We're good. Sean, are we good? I can't speak to the help it'll give anyone else, but I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> Fantastic. Tate? Yeah, this was great. All right. Do us a favor. If you've liked the Roundtable podcast, you want us to do another one, all you need to do is email support at thelandgeek.com, a screenshot of your review of the Art of Passive Income model, and talk about, you know, if you, if you like the Roundtable or not, we're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Don't forget to email Scott for your promo code. I'll send out an email as well for his accounting course. And uh, should we all try to do it? The, should the five of us try to do the, the geekiest awesome. thing of all time? Uh, Mark, Mark. Eric, you, Eric's saying no. <laughs> Eric's already out. I'm Mark, surprised Eric hasn't hung up yet. I didn't get a chance to tell you this, but like we did a, we did a podcast the other day and the guy's like, man, that was really horrible. If it's, and I'm like, yeah, I know we, we just, it's just the way it is. He's like, well, maybe you should quit. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, let's do it, Mark. I Ready? say, I, you know, I say embrace the suck of, on it. Uh, I have let's no go. shame, but I'm not sure what we're talking about here. Let freedom ring, baby. No, you know what's so funny? It's the fact that Sean doesn't know. <laughs> Wait, Sean doesn't even listen to his own podcast. I got, I got the cliff notes from, uh, from Rachel when she yeah. was on. It's, un it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This is, this is why, you know, they're moving to Europe because they're just completely aloof to mm -hmm. the Lanky community. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to go drink some espresso and travel around and we'll do some deals and, you know, we'll just keep making more passive income and maybe we'll listen to the podcast. Well, spot on impression of me. <laughs> That's how I roll. All right. One, <laughs> two, three. 
three. Let, Let the freedom, freedom ring. ring. That was pretty good. Yeah. It wasn't bad. You know, it's that's the magic of Tate Litchfield right there. There you go. <laughs> big big so. pimpy. Hey, really? Oh man. I hope that I really hope that doesn't stick. Me too. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, big 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 papa. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks.